Hey everybody, welcome back. We've talked about the expansion of the right to vote, but now let's talk about factors that affect voter turnout. Make your vote heard by smashing that like button. For most of the last century, voter turnout in the US has been relatively low among Western democracies. So naturally, political scientists attempt to explain this. This lesson is based on three things that affect voter turnout, structural barriers, political efficacy, and demographics. Structural barriers refer to rules, laws, or policies that make it more difficult to do something, in this case, for a person to exercise her right to vote. These can include things like the hours that polls are open and voter ID laws. But before we go any further, it's important to emphasize that states are in charge of federal elections. That's counterintuitive, so I'll say it again. States are in charge of federal elections. That means that each state government sets its own election policies, including voter registration laws and procedures. Some states make it easier, for example, automatically registering citizens to vote. Other states require people to register themselves, but this can be made more convenient by allowing them to do it online, or it can be more difficult, for example, by requiring people to register in person. States also get to make their own procedures on how, when, and where to vote. At least 46 states have early voting opportunities, allowing citizens to vote in person between 10 and 40 days before the election. The idea being that this increases chances for people to vote and therefore increases turnout. Similarly, there are differences in absentee and mail-in voting opportunities. Some states send everybody a mail-in ballot, while others have more strict requirements on who qualifies to vote by mail. Additionally, some states have implemented stricter voter photo ID laws, while other states have not. Essentially, some states require voters to show an official photo ID to be allowed to vote, while other states have no such requirement. If you remember the 2020 election at all, then I shouldn't need to tell you that there is a debate raging over voter fraud and voter suppression. Typically, advocates of voter photo ID laws emphasize the goal to stop voter fraud, stop people from casting illegal votes, while opponents argue that the real goal of such laws is voter suppression, to prevent people who legally can vote from exercising their right based on a technicality. In the aftermath of that election, even more states have made stricter election and ID laws. There are still other differences, like differences in funding for polling places and poll workers. At times, there are allegations of polling places in some areas being poorly funded or understaffed, leading to long lines that critics claim are designed to intentionally dissuade people from voting. Similarly, states determine the hours that polls are open, and things like whether independent groups can provide food and drink to people waiting in long lines. Again, all these policies have the potential to affect voter turnout, which can influence who wins elections. It's also true that the type of election greatly affects voter turnout as well. Presidential elections have significantly higher turnout than midterm elections. About one-third fewer people vote in midterms than in presidential elections. That probably isn't surprising, as the single most common form of political participation is voting in presidential elections. Political efficacy matters as well. Political efficacy refers to a person's belief that her vote matters, that she can make a difference by participating in the political process. And predictably, people who have a higher sense of political efficacy are much more likely to vote and engage in the political process. Political scientists also use demographic characteristics to predict the likelihood of whether a person will vote or not. Here are some of the main takeaways. Older people are more likely to vote than younger people. 18 to 24 year olds vote the least and older people vote the most. Income is also a good predictor of turnout. People who earn higher levels of income are significantly more likely to vote than people who earn less. Similarly, education matters as well. The more educated a person is, the more likely they are to vote. Women vote at higher rates than men, but it's not a dramatic difference. And religious people are more likely to vote than non-religious people. All right, and last up, we're gonna talk about factors affecting voter choice, meaning who people actually vote for. Please realize that everything we've talked about to this point has merely been things that make it more or less likely that a person will vote nothing to do with how they'd vote. Now we're looking at factors that predict whether a person would vote for Democrats or Republicans. The first one is kind of obvious, but the best predictor of how a person will vote is their party identification. Hard to believe, but if somebody says they're a Democrat, they probably vote for the Democratic candidates. And if they're a Republican, well, yep, that's right. They usually vote for Republicans. Closely related is political ideology, conservatives often vote Republican, and liberals usually vote Democratic. Candidate characteristics also matter. This includes things like how honest or competent or likable a candidate is perceived to be. 
and contemporary political issues matter quite a bit as well. This means that whatever is dominating the news and political discussions matters a lot. If the big issue to voters is immigration or foreign policy, it might help one party. While if people are worried about climate change or gun control, they might vote the other way. And just like we talked about demographic characteristics predicting the likelihood of voter turnout, certain demographics also serve as useful predictors of which party a person might vote for. Keep in mind that people are in more than one group, and these are very broad sketches. And yes, of course, there are lots of people who are the exception to the very broad stereotypes I'm about to lay out. And also keep in mind that things change on an election to election basis, with gaps sometimes being wider or smaller. And the numbers that I'm giving are based on elections from 2018 through 2022. Starting with gender, men lean Republican while women lean Democratic. Between 48 and 54% of men vote Republican in a given election, while 51 to 58% of women vote Democratic. In 2022, 51% of women voted Democratic, while 48% voted Republican. So be super careful with these generalities, because sometimes the differences are much less than what stereotypes might suggest. Next, race and ethnicity. Black voters vote overwhelmingly for the Democratic Party with over 90% support for Democrats. White voters lean Republican, with the GOP winning between 52 and 57% of the white vote. Non-white Hispanics support Democrats more often, but at lower rates than in the past. In 2018, Democrats won 72% of the Hispanic vote, while in 2022, that number was down to 60%. And super early 2024 polls show that trend may continue. An important footnote to all this is to remember that midterm elections usually favor the party out of power. Democrats did well in 2018, while Republicans did better in 2022. Some of this variance likely reflects differences in turnout as opposed to shifts in demographic party support. Age is another good predictor. 61 to 72% of younger voters voted Democratic, while voters over 50 lean Republican. The GOP wins between 48 and 55% of voters aged 50 to 64, and between 52 and 56% of voters aged 65 and older. Again, I'm guessing that's not as dramatic as some of you may have predicted. One of the real battles is geographic. Democrats dominate urban areas, Republicans dominate rural areas, so the battle is over the suburbs, with the suburbs bouncing back and forth between slightly favoring each party. And let's throw in religion, I mean, why not? People who attend religious services more frequently are much more likely to vote Republican. Getting to some specifics, white Protestants, and especially white evangelical Protestants, vote strongly Republican, to the tune of 81 to 86% of white evangelicals. Catholics are basically 50-50, and Jewish voters have historically been solidly Democratic, though those numbers are a bit down from peaks, with 68% of Jewish voters voting Democratic in 2022. And atheists and agnostics vote overwhelmingly Democratic. All right, well, that's it for this one. Until next time, this has been a La Money production. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to smash that like button and check out the ultimate review packet. And I will see you in the next video.